Hello everybody and welcome back to Enter the Gungeon Hard Mode. We're jumping in once again and I'm gonna go as... Who do I wanna go as? Let's just, just like run it back as Paradox. Paradox is fun. Paradox is a good time. Let's just go in and have ourselves a nice old time. Yesterday, I am... Um, well, I say yesterday. Um, th the last video that I recorded, I went on an absolute rant. <laughs> I ended up getting... For some reason, just very... Ooh, we started off with 30 casings here. I think we got loose casings there. Um, I got, like, into a very passionate rant about, uh, about like, homeschooling and working and... Well, I wouldn't say homeschooling, but you know what I mean. Like, work, uh, doing school from home and, like, working from home. And previously working in a store and all that sort of stuff, and I was getting very mad at random customer stories. So I'm going to tell more of those today because they're always fun. They're always fun. Or at least I hope they are. <laughs> I don't know how many, I don't know how many uh, of you out there are uh, are like working in stores at the moment because obviously stores are still open while COVID's happening. Nonetheless, cause everyone's got to buy their food. But um, or like I've have done it previously, done like the service industry sort of work. Luckily, I've never had the displeasure of working in the uh, food service industry, like working in a bar or like a restaurant, because. It seems awful. It seems the, like the worst. L literally every person I've spoke to, especially bar work, has had terrible experiences with it. I don't know if it's just UK bars and UK pubs, but uh, yeah, apparently that's not the sort of thing you want to be doing. Um, so luckily I've not had the displeasure of uh, of getting into any of that sort of stuff, but I have, like I said, done my fair share of work in, in a shop, in a store, and I worked at a place called Heron Foods for about a year and two months. Um, and I, I, I sort of started, it's kind of weird how I got into that job, actually. Um, I I kind of started up that job because it, it, it was very odd. So I, I moved over to another city after I finished university, the, the, the city that my girlfriend went to university at. Um, and of course, I kind of, oh, is this the speed up? And it's Love Potion, Love Potion season. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, yeah, obviously I kind of came here with with nothing really. I like I kind of just moved with a little bit of money from after university, and that was kind of it. Didn't have any jobs lined up or anything. I just kind of came here, hope for the best, <laughs> um, and went for it. And I only actually applied for two jobs. I got really lucky. So I applied for one, and this was actually a pretty funny one. Uh, I went for a job at um, I can't remember the clothing store's name. It was a clothing store. Um, and it was really not the sort of place that I'd ever shop in. It was very sort of like trendy and smart and like like in style and all that sort of stuff. And I I'm just I just could not give a shit about branded things at all. I I just don't care. Um, I would rather I would rather spend five pound on a shirt that isn't branded. Um, and the 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 forty pound extra that I would have spent on a branded one on sweets <laughs> or a game or something like that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it was quite like a trendy place and I went and I was like, yeah, it's just gonna be stacking shelves. Like, I like it, I doubt it's gonna be something where they actually give two flying fucks about what you think about clothes. But I was wrong. I went in like smart attire thinking it was a uh, a one-on-one -on -one interview. It was not. Um, it was a group interview, which I, considering this is my first ever interview, I hadn't really done anything like that before. Oh, I'm going to grab Magic Quiver, see what it does. Um, have a little look. See, increase the damage of arrow-based weapons. Not very good, but we can make it work later on, I guess. Um, but yes, uh, so I, I went I went for this interview, and I dressed up all smart. Like, I wouldn't say suit, but I, I, I wore, like, I wore like nice trousers and um, and a jacket and stuff. And I thought, I, I thought that I looked, like, professional, because I thought it was going to be a proper interview. No. Everyone came in their normal clothes, and I looked like a right twat. Because, um, again, my first interview, I didn't fucking know. And I wasn't, like, aware of the, the shop's reputation, or I don't know. I, I guess the shop was just, like, had a bit, a lot bigger of a reputation or something than I thought. Uh, but anyways, I went. And it was in a... I should have sort of known that it was going to be a bit, a bit more like that, because it was in an outlet mall. Like, a, we don't really have many of them, but where I live now, it does have one. And it was in there. And I do remember, like, I really didn't want the job that much just because of where it was, and I was like, eh. Not, I don't, I don't want to work in an outlet mall, really, and so I was like, I kind of need a job. So I, I was waiting for the bus and was contemplating, should I actually get on? Should I actually go for this job? What if I get it? I don't actually want it. Uh, but anyways, it was, it, so I went for it. I got there. 
I, I arrived like, um, I think a little bit late. What the hell is this? Blast shower. Comes with auto hair dryer. Interesting. Uh, let's have a little look, see. Uh, damages all enemies in the room and applies the player's effects onto the enemies. Quick and easy and portable shower intended for the community. Um, applies the player's effects onto the enemy. I don't know what that means. Um, anyways, let's, let, let's go down to the next floor. Um, but yeah, so I went there and I, I almost, I, I got there like a little bit late. But luckily, I think the interview is delayed. And I got in, like I said, I looked like an absolute twat in front of everyone. Because everyone else was wearing just normal clothes. And I was looking like a smart boy. Which is smart until everyone else isn't smart. And then it's not smart. <laughs> um, and it was so weird. Like, considering this job was the lowest, like, being the lowest ranked person in that store. The, the two things you would be doing is helping people find things on the shop floor. And taking stuff out of the back. And putting it on the shelves. That was the entire job. It was a minimum wage job. Basically, turn your brain off and do it. Super low effort. And they asked us loads of questions about, like... One <clears throat> one of them was, like... Here's a rack of clothes. Put together a, an outfit. I'm like, what? Why? What do you mean, put together an outfit? Who cares? And then, um... And then, like, another one, they were, they were asking, like, us about our personal style choices. And, of course, I was like, I tried to look smart. It's an interview. And apparently that wasn't the right answer. Um, and then they were asking, like, how I keep up with fashion. And I was kind of just like, well, obviously I don't. But it's like, why, why do people that work at a store that stacks shelves for clothes need to be into fashion? Um, I, I just found it bizarre. And... The weirdest part of the interview, by far, was... We are going to die here, by the way. Um, the weirdest part of the interview, by far, was how they ended it off. They gave each person a unique scenario. Um, they, yeah, they gave each person a unique scenario where they had to, like... They, they pretended to be, like, a customer and said, if this customer came in and did this, this, and this, I was asking for this, this, and this, what would you do to help them? And, like, some of them were pretty simple. They were like, this this woman comes in and she's looking for a summer blouse and she's trying to decide between these colours and these colours or she's trying to pair it with these shoes and these. And, like, give advice. What do you think would be the best and how would you, how would you approach the situation? Which, honestly, I very highly doubt you, you do much of that on the job, but I guess it's fair enough. But then she came to me and I don't know. It was two in, two interviews, man and woman. I don't know if they just didn't like me or just didn't. I just knew I wasn't going to get the job. So decided to mess with me. But me and the girl after me, we got the worst questions of all time. So my question was, someone comes in and they want to they want to buy a pair of jeans that, um, that are too small for them. What do you do? And I said, you just, I, I would, I would offer them the size up. Or the size down, however they need them. Like, oh, they're, they're like a rugby player. They've got really, really big legs. So they're going to need a bigger size. But you have to sell them that pair of jeans in that size. And I was like, no. No, I don't. I just tell them to get a different size. And they were like, no, no, no. You've got to sell them this pair. And I'm like, no. I don't have to sell them this pair. If the jeans don't fit them, I'm not going to force them to buy them. Like, what kind of scenario is that? That is literally, I can't win. I can't, I can't somehow convince someone to buy something that doesn't fit them. What do you mean? This is bizarre. And then, the next one. This is by far the dumbest one. So, there's this, like, the last woman. She gets her scenario. And it's like, a woman comes in and she wants to buy a pair of socks. And the socks have pictures on them of sloths. But the woman has a fear of sloths. For one... Why would you pick sloths? Why wouldn't you just say, like, spiders or something? Why would you pick sloths? But also, if a woman comes in and wants to buy a pair of socks <coughs> that have sloths on them, but she says sloths, two things come to mind. One, why does she want to buy them if she's scared of the sloths? Why would she want them on her socks? Two, and probably the more pressing thing, if someone says they have a fear of something that is printed on an item of clothing, I'm not going to try and convince that person to buy it. What do you mean? What? Just, oh my god. Ugh. It was just, it was just the worst. And like, 
I remember as well, because as I said, it was a group interview, and we were all kind of chatting afterwards. And I obviously said, I'm out of place here. This clearly isn't the job for me. I'm not getting this. And everyone was kind of like, no, but yes, <laughs> pretty much. And like this one guy was like fresh out of fashion school or something. And I'm like, I mean, I'm hoping that this guy was just doing it for, for the money and not because of where it is. But I don't think you need to go to fashion school to stack clothes. Like, I'm hoping he was just going there because he needed money while he found his career job. Which I'm assuming he was, but I just... Like, he he acted quite high and mighty about it. He's like, oh, well, uh, well I, I, I think I'm going to get this job because I went to fashion school. It's like, you, you will literally be going into the back room, opening a box, carrying said things from the box onto the shop floor, putting them on a shelf, and repeating all day. Or you might get lucky and be on the till very briefly. I'm just like, ugh. My goodness. God damn. But anyways, I was going to talk about me working at Heron, but I ended up getting sidetracked to remember how much of a shit that was. But on to what I actually was planning on talking about here. Um, So I went from my, my second interview. I actually got, I really shouldn't have gotten it, to be honest. But no. I say that. I feel I did get it on my own merit, but my mother, my mum, knew um, knew someone that was very high up at that store and uh, like referred me, so that was great. Um, but apparently, like, and, and also the manager of the store that I interviewed for was close, was like in contact and kind of kind of close with this person that was higher up at the store. So I got like a personal reference to that to that uh, guy, and. Um, okay. Um, and yeah, he did say the, the, uh, my, who was eventually my boss, he did say that that's not why he gave me the job, he gave it for my personal merit, which is good to know, but definitely that was a foot in the door. And I remember, so there was two, there was two stores, two Heron stores really close by, they were like 20 minutes away from each other, they're both quite close to my house, um, my flat should I say, um, and I, um, I went to the first store and asked for the job. And he was there, the guy that was eventually my boss, he was there. And he said, oh, we don't have any jobs going at this store. Try the other store. So then I went like two or three days later to the other store. And it turns out the other store did have a job going, but it was also being managed by the man that was managing the other store just two days prior. In those two days, he changed like location to where he worked like he'd, he'd stopped managing the previous location and started managing that one um and I'm, I'm guessing he must not have known about that otherwise he probably would have said something but anyways he, he pretty much hired me on the spot he, he pretty much gave me the job straight away after the interview and that ended up being a great job like I, I feel like i did really well there i liked everyone that i worked with even though it was in kind of a scummy area everyone mo like most of the customers were really nice because it was a very local shop like Basically, everyone around the area went in every day, so you, like, you knew everyone's faces, and everyone like kind of knew each other. It was just, it was nice. It was a, a really sort of welcome experience as my first job, because I think a lot of people have really, really negative experiences with their first job. They're like shitty manual labor, long hours, minimum pay jobs. Everyone has like pretty bad experiences, but I kind of liked it, because it was very much just a, a job where it was like, yep, I'm going to turn off my brain and just carry on. I'm going to just completely turn off my brain and get to work and yeah, like I could, I could go into the back and kind of the day to day, it, it changed from some days, but for the most part, it was usually like get in around 10 o'clock, do, do a little bit of like tidying up and usually serve on the till. Although the till is essentially just a waste of potential, uh, like the checkout, it's like uh, essentially just a waste of potential for people in terms of if they're actually good at it, because it's literally just scanning items and pressing buttons on a screen. It takes really, really no effort at all. Although weirdly, and I say weirdly, it's not weird in the UK, but compared to the rest of the world it is, you have to stand on the till, on, on the checkout, while you're scanning items and, and uh, giving change and all that sort of stuff. You have to stand, even if you're there for eight hours. You have to stand the whole time. You don't, you're not allowed to sit. And that's like common in most shops in the UK. I found it very odd. Um, it's like, apparently it looks unprofessional, but I don't think it does. It just means that I don't have a really bad back and uh, my feet don't ache, which they did all the time. Um, 
yeah, anyway, so, so like, a lot of the time I get put on the tail, but basically, as soon as you showed any potential in actually being good at the job, <coughs> the, the management usually was like, yeah, you're not supposed to be on the tail. That's a really easy job. Give that to the shit munchers. <laughs> no offense if you're on the till. It's it's a it's a it's a noble profession now. But it is it is a necessary part of the business, but it is definitely <clears throat> the sort of easiest, most least uh, skill intensive job there. Cause like the, the job as a whole isn't very skill intensive, but that's definitely the, the least so part of it. Um but anyways, yeah, so I uh, I kind of got quickly after a few months pulled off the till. I still have to do it from nine, time to time, for the most part. So I get in at 10 and, and normally wait the till for a tiny bit until like 11 or 12. And then the, the day's delivery would come in. <clears throat> the shop was really, really small. So we, we only got deliveries five times a week. We didn't get one every single day. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, and essentially the delivery is just like two or three trolleys full of food uh, and all sorts of good stuff. And you just you just put it out onto the shop floor and restock everything. And basically that was was at least my boss's determined factor for if you were good at the job or not. Because um the speed at which you could get one cage done was kind of his determining factor. And apparently that was kind of my strong suit. It depends on like sort of day to day. Like some days I was just not into it or like whatever. But like once once you got to the point where you knew where everything went. Uh, which, again, it was a small shop, so it didn't take too long. Oop, we got a weird thin room here. Yeah, it didn't take too long to do that because uh, the shop was pretty small. But once I learned that, um, it very much got to the point where I could get to work and completely turn off my brain. Like, I just didn't have to think at all. It was all just automatic. Uh, and that was so nice. Because having a job... Oh, my fucking life. This is the worst room ever. Having a job where you can literally just completely switch off, get the job done, come home, and not have to think about the job at all after the fact, that's that's good work. It was for minimum wage, so not exactly the best pay, but still, it was it was it was good stuff. Um Don't talk to him. Buy the armor. Uh yeah, it was it was really good stuff, so what are you kidding me? You dirty shitbag of a game. That was very mean. Very, very mean indeed. More keys. We're getting a lot of keys right now. Make sure we've got Cogger Battle going. Oh my god. But yeah, I, I found it quite uh, quite a simple and easy job to sort of to plod along with. It's why I ended up staying there as long as I did, because like you really don't realize until you get into work how quickly a year of your life can go by. And that year, ooh, a black chest. Ooh, it's actually kind of a good flaw to get this. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of crazy how, um, how how quickly a year of your life can go by when you're working. And I just kind of plodded along through that job for, for a full year and it just kind of happened. I was like, oh, I've been here a year now? I was kind of supposed to be at that job for a few months in the interim period while, while I found a sort of better job uh, that was more like IT focused with my degree. And it just never happened. <laughs> I just got really comfortable. I was earning like enough money to get by. So I just, I stuck with it because it made me happy. Like my my ultimate goal in life has always been, I want, I want a job or just a life where I can have as little stress as possible. And that enabled that very much so. It really did. Um, and I, yeah, I gonna say I really liked that part, that aspect of it. We might die on this boss. Um, but yeah, I really like that aspect of it, that it was just like really simple, just do the job, go home, don't have to think about it, no stress, and that was it. And as I've sort of gone up the ladder with my jobs, uh, oh my god, please just die. Uh, as I've gone up the ladder with my jobs, obviously things have gotten more stressful. Um, there's definitely a lot, a lot more stressful aspects to my job, but... I don't think it's as bad as I was initially thought. Like, I was I was a person that was very, um... I, I very much didn't want to work. I very much didn't like the idea of having a job and going to work every day and all that sort of stuff. I really was quite apprehensive for it when I first, like, got out of education. And it's why I went to university. Like, I went to university because it's a good idea if you think you can do it. Um, to get yourself a degree. It makes you more hireable and all that sort of good stuff. Um, but... I kind of just did it because it was three more years of not having to decide what I want to do for a job and not having to go out and actually get a job. And I could live at, I could live at home because of where I went to university and just made thing, made life a lot easier and simpler for me for the time. Um, and yeah, uh, 
So that, that was kind of like my biggest driving force, which really shouldn't be a biggest driving force for university, but for me it was. Um, I, I, I hate this room. I hate it. Wasn't even the real one. I killed all the copies first. Are you kidding me? God dang it. Ooh, hello. Um, yes, please. Yeah, so um, that was kind of my big driving force. Now I was kind of, I wouldn't say scared, but I really, I didn't really want to go into uh, into work. I wanted to try and put it off for as long as possible. And then I ended up getting that job and I, I, I got into it way easier than I thought. I got acclimated to it very quickly. And I really didn't find it too bad at all, to be honest. And I think a lot of people probably think the same way I did. And you'll you'll realize that when you get into it, it's really not that big of a deal. Depends on your job, really. Depends on the, how much stress you have. But especially when you go into your first jobs where they're usually low paying, you can usually just turn your brain off and get it done. And it's not really that hard a time. Uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's going to be a bit of a shorter one. And I'll see you guys in the next one.